Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second part on the Kugman generator. What we have seen in the previous video was a short motivation why this is a very interesting concept. Right? If we consider continuous time dynamic systems, which is very often the case, then one can use the concept of the Kugman generator directly on this continuous time dynamics. We have seen that if we consider sequences of measurements, that have a particular time step tau, then this time step obviously has an impact on the particular Kuban operator approximation. And this is not often very helpful or necessary even, because in this continuous time setting, the generator is, as the name suggests, uh, the operator that allows us to generate all the other operators by you know, simply raising it to uh, to uh, taking the exponential multiplied by the time scale. And we have seen also that the Koopman eigenvalues are the same, and the Koopman eigenfunctions or the generator eigenfunctions are also the same. Or let me rephrase this the, the eigenfunctions are the same, the eigenvalues are strongly related also by taking the log or exponentiating, depending on whether we go from discrete time to continuous time or vice versa. And so what we would like to show now is that it is very easy to also approximate the generator from data. So this is the EDMD optimization problem, so the, the multivariate regression problem, where we want to find the matrix so that this matrix maps the observable at time step k to the observable at time step k plus 1 in the best possible way. Right, so it doesn't have to be one long time series, but it's always the case that this is a mapping one time step ahead. Okay, and so in a very similar manner, we can now formulate the generator version of this simply by finding a matrix approximation, not of the Koopman operator, but of this generator. And so we're going to call this L. And you see that this is basically the exact same thing. So we take the sum over all our samples and now the error that we want to minimize is between the time derivative of x, uh, psi of x time step k minus psi of x k times k. Okay, so straightforward really. Um, what we need to consider is what is this time derivative really and then we can you know, solve the problem. So there's two ways to do this. One would be to consider the analytical way, let's say, to say that psi of x is really what we have seen as our equation here. Um, taking the derivative of our dictionary functions. So let's say we have taken monomials, then the derivative of these entries is very, very easy. Same for radial basis functions, Fourier modes, or basically any dictionary that we can define, times our dynamics. And this is the more tricky part. So if we want to use this expression, we actually have to know the right-hand side of our system. In many cases we do, and then we can do this. Um, sometimes we want to study systems that we don't know at all. And then another way might be to simply use numerical differentiation. And so I'm writing one particular uh, choice here, but this is a very tricky business. It depends on, for clean data it's usually very easy, this is what we're going to see in the code in a minute. Um, for noisy data this can give rise to quite a bit of, um, yeah issues how to well approximate these derivatives. So what I'm going to say is this is approximately psi of, excuse me, what I need here is now a time step. This is for xk, is approximately psi at xk plus 1 and so I'm going to take central differences here, minus psi of xk minus 1, divided by 2 tau, okay? So central differences, of course, uh, the first and the final point cannot be computed in this way, but uh, 
I'm going to show you in the code in a second what, what I'm doing there. Okay, so all we need is we need time series data exactly as an EDMD and then we need time derivatives. So these can be computed if we know the right hand side of our dynamics then and have the analytical uh, derivatives available. This can be done in this way very nicely. This is a more ad hoc version, let's say, a more messy version, if you wish, for, for noiseless data, this is perfectly fine. For noisy data, one has to be a little bit careful here. Okay, one comment before we actually you know, show how we can create a dynamic system, then look into the code. This problem is actually um, related to the very well-known Cindy approach. So the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. What we're doing here is we're defining a dictionary, so a subspace, and then we want to find the linear operator that maps this lifted space to the time derivative. In the Cindy approach, very similar, we want to find coefficients that tell us how the right-hand side has to look so that it gives us the derivative. But then we have to add a sparsity term in order to make this card so the coefficient matrix sparse. But anyway, a close relation there. Okay, before we look at the code, one final statement. Let's now define that our observable, or the, the, the dictionary, the, the subspace, is our state Z. Then we can define a dynamical system of the following form. And this is now our surrogate model, if you wish, okay? So this equality sign is only for this reduced model. It does not guarantee exactness. We have talked about this a bit in, in the approximation part, okay? So this is not a perfect model if the subspace is not um, invariant, but still we can code this up and write down a, a very nice dynamic system. And in terms of eigenfunctions, um, eigenvalues and Koopman modes, we can do all the stuff that we have seen before in EDMD, but now using the L matrix instead of the K matrix. Other than that, everything is just as it was before. And now let's have a look at the code and to, to, to study what we, what we have seen here and in the previous video, let's consider the van der Poel oscillator. Right? So a second order ODE, or if I rewrite it, it's a first order ODE with two components, quite simple but nicely studied system actually. So here are some uh, sample trajectories where they start randomly in this two by or four by four box. And you see that whether we start inside the circle or outside the circle, all tra trajectories approach this well, circle-like limit cycle and then forever circle around this, this limit cycle. And so what we will do is we collect data, more than these sample trajectories, and use EDMD, and then use generator EDMD, and compare the two models, both in terms of prediction accuracy, as well as the eigenvalues, right? I'm not going to study the eigenfunctions, but um, yeah, as the theory suggests, they are identical as well. Okay, so let's have a look. Data collection works in the same way as it has before. We define 2,000 trajectories of length 10, each, and then we have, this is our time step for the dynamic system, the, the runge kutta integrator, but we're taking 0.25 seconds as our tau value. I will define the tau a little bit further down. And so what we do is we, we collect random initial states, 2,000 of them, this is what I've decided on here, and then have these tuples xk and xk plus one, if you wish. All right, so this is the data set. This is my, my x values. Um, so really nicely covering this, this box and in particular the limit cycle that we want to, to study. Um, yeah, and then we do everything that we have done before. We define on a dictionary. Some code is hidden here. Uh, what matters is that we have these Hermit polynomials similar to before. So this Psi function takes x and considers all the Hermit polynomials um, as as the basis function or the, the, the basis for our function space, the subspace of uh, the observable space. And then we do EMD, EDMD as we have done it all the time. We lift the X data, we lift the Y data, 
we compute the K matrix solving the simple regression problem. This is exactly the solution to, to this problem here. Um, and then we need this B matrix that projects back onto the state. And so since Hamid polynomials have constant functions inside, I can simply select the entries of Psi that give me X1 and X2. All right. And then for the generator EDMD, we need to compute derivatives. As I said, one has to know the right-hand side here, and one has to know derivatives of the basis functions, which we do in this case. But uh, for simplicity, I'm simply taking this uh, finite differencing. I'm also not considering noise, so the finite differences should be good enough. And what I'm doing is, uh, the, the, the middle line here is really the central differences that I have defined here. <coughs> and then in the top, and bottom rows, I am taking forward or backward differences because I do not have a left or right point in this case. And so what I'm doing here is I'm now creating this psi x dot matrix, which precisely does this. So I'm taking um, the psi at x k plus 1 and then minus k minus 1 divided by 2 tau. So exactly what I've defined uh, above. And then the regression problem is exactly the same as before, just where the psi y was is now the psi x dot. And so very, very easily transferred. And now we can compare what happened. So for this dynamical system, this is what I've written here, I need some way of numerical integration scheme. But since it's a linear system, this is easily done. Right? I can simply use this one, e to the L tau times the time step gives me you know, the solution of a linear system. We have seen this in other videos. I can also add a link um, where this is you know, shown. And so we can compute this beforehand after we have defined the, the lag time and then get our discrete time system back. And this is what I'm doing here. So this L tau is really L times the time step tau. And tau is really this 0.25 seconds that I have used earlier on. So we have really accurate time steps. And now what we can do is, I've hidden the code, but this is simply simulating a couple of random trajectories. What I'm plotting here is on the left-hand side, the x1 and x2 component of these trajectories. The colors match. And in the middle column, I have the x1 and x2 state of the Koopman operator surrogate model. And on the right-hand side, I have the x1 and x2 component of this generator-based model that I have used. Um, Okay, and in the top you see the error of these trajectories in random, uh, these randomly initialized trajectories, and the white dashed lines are the expectation, so the average over all my trajectories. And you see that the performance is actually very, very similar, which is not surprising, um, but this is what we get, right? So you can use the generator, and now we have the advantage that I can not only uh, find this L tau, but I can find all the k taus in my other uh, uh, name uh, I gave it, k tau was for the Koopman operator for a time step tau. I simply exchange the tau and I can get arbitrary time stepping. So this is a bit more versatile. Now finally, let's compare the spectrum. And what I'm doing here is um, exactly what we've done before a couple of times. The k matrix, I can decompose it into eigenvalues lambda and eigenvectors xi. And I can decompose the L matrix and eigenvalues mu, which are now the continuous time eigenvalues, and the, the eigenvectors associated with this. And so what you see is um, this comparison. What I've done here is, uh, maybe let me show, I've taken, I've raised the continuous time eigenvalues to e to the mu times tau, which is you know, the transfer from a continuous time eigenvalue to the discrete time eigenvalue, and then I match these. And vice versa, I'm taking the log of the Koopman eigenvalues to transfer them to continuous time. And this is what you see. On the left-hand side, you have the discrete time eigenvalues in white of the K matrix, in red of the L matrix, and the continuous time versions on the right-hand side, so taking the log of the white dots here, and in red, it's taking e to the uh, uh, mu tau to go from the red ones from right to left. And so you see that we actually have a very nice match in particular in terms of these leading eigenvalues, which are the dominating dynamics, I would say. So the mean value and then the leading frequencies. And in fact, this is actually quite 
nicely more refined and so you don't see these very high and sort of let's say spurious frequencies so in some situations i will also put a reference you can see that the generator dmd matrix is a lot cleaner which is also not surprising because it matches a lot more the structure of the underlying system if i raise it this to let's say or integrate this this system will fill up and have more entries whereas the generator uh, the relation between the generator problem and the dynamic system is actually much closer so we have a tendency to get sparser models here all right so this concludes these two brief videos on on the generator edmd there's obviously a lot more to explore but this is the core idea and this can now be used in combination with all that we know about edmd already just translated to the generator world and as i said the challenge is really getting these derivatives which is challenging in particular if we have noisy data so thanks for your attention and stay tuned for the next video